Good evening. I'm your host, Karen Hudis, in this series on the Network of Global Corporate Control. Today's show is live. We are talking about the corruption in the world's money. Today's segment is called, How Are We Winning? We're also going to talk about Greece. Thanks, as always, to DCTV, Carmen Stanley, studio producer and director, Alia Jamari, audio and teleprompter, and Lolita Ratsford, floor director. Let me start out with an email that I got a week ago that was deleted, and then the banking cartel put it back after I said that the banking cartel was afraid to let people speak out on our progress. This was sent on the 2nd of March. Subject, broken link. Andy, that's not his real name. This is beautiful, and I'm going to share it. This was removed from my email, and now, five days later, it ended up in my drafts folder. Please let me know whether you would prefer that I use a pseudonym instead of your real identity. And this was from Andy. Subject, broken link. Hi, Miss Hudis. Just waiting to let you know that the uh, link for the Constitution was broken from your last Twitter. I'm still studying the material you're providing. It's laborious but enlightening. Thank you. Many have the requisite patience, others not so much. Those that persevere in their research will begin asking more and more pertinent and incisive questions directly to you and amongst themselves. Though the results of progress being made by you and everyone else that's involved mentally and or physically with the removal of corruption and the raising of awareness of the existence of the global debt facility may often seem unduly slow or uneventful, I for one feel that progress is very much evident in reviewing the documents and mentally putting the puzzle pieces of the big picture together. Your efforts to show us these things are greatly appreciated. The group that I speak with regarding the global debt facility and all else are at varying levels of acceptance denial. Slowly but surely and patiently, as you have done and continue to do for everyone's sake. The saying goes that even water can smooth rough stone. That's how I see you sometimes. That's how I see all of us as we work to try to understand and remedy the problems we are collectively as humanity facing. All humanity. All. Not just some. Best wishes for your continuing perseverance, strength, and courage. Andy. I'm answering the question, how are we winning? As Andy says, people are talking about the corruption in the money system and what to do about it. And what Andy said was directly to you and amongst themselves. We humanity liberating ourselves. We have reached critical mass. The global currency reset is now manifest in reality. There's no going back. The dominoes are falling. Which dominoes? As we know from the National War College Power Transition Model, we're talking about the Coalition for the Rule of Law. It's 90 to 95 percent likely that there's a coalition in place which includes the United States minus the Federal Reserve Bank and the U.S. military minus the Knights of Malta on top. We're implementing the global currency reset. Yasek Kugler brought me a power transition model in 2004. The World Bank's legal department, which communicates to the ministers of finance and development on the board of governors that runs the World Bank, is precisely where this power transition model needed to land. YouTube attempted to censor my comment on the power transition model when I was writing the teleprompter for this segment. And so I tweeted, Interesting, YouTube dropped my next comment in which I mentioned 
that Japan and Germany will not let the Federal Reserve note crash, resulting in a unilateral surrender. This prediction comes from the accurate power transition model. I was looking to see what YouTube wants me to concentrate on for my upcoming broadcast. This is it. Thanks, YouTube. And so I tweeted my thanks to YouTube for the assist when YouTube attempted to censor my reply to a comment in the archives on DCTV. Let me tell you, first of all, that it's no accident that we're winning. We are claiming our birthright, the world's wealth and the global debt facility, because it's ours. I want to show you that we, Humanity United, have what it takes to win. We are capable and loving and deserve to win. And I'm going to show you a clip which gives you an example of what we're able to do. I think you'll enjoy it. How about a state title on a stolen inbounds pass and a 63-foot launch with no time? That was Julian McGarvey of Ardsley High School in New York State to defeat Tappan Zee High School and win the New York State High School Class A title on that bucket. And now... The what you just saw was a shot from the uh, basketball court, three quarters the length of the court. It landed, and that, uh, that team, it's a high school team, won their state championship with that shot. I've been telling you about the National War College's power transition model for many years. I'll show you a two-year-old tweet so that you can see how I've been telling people all along that the dominoes are going to fall. And this was sent on October 10th, 2016, and I sent it to Oli, who had asked me a question. That's not how the model works. You need to figure out three values of the groups, stakeholders, coalitions, which remain the same over time, how powerful the, the coalitions are, how important the issue is to the stakeholder, and the position taken. The model is remaining on track for the rule of law. It's 90 to 95 percent accurate. I'm also giving you links to two talks by the political scientists who developed the model for Ronald Taman, who was the chair of the Department of National Strategy and professor, professor of National Strategy at the National War College at the time. I discovered that Ted had invited Yasek Kugler and Mark Abdullahian to give presentations on the Department of Defense power transition model. In 2000, Yasek and Mark published a book on power transitions together with Ronald Taman, who was then chair of the Department of National Strategy and professor of national strategy at the National War College. In 2014, I wrote to Ted about the power transition model and asked to give a TED talk on the global debt facility. Yasek brought this model to the World Bank in 2004. The rest is history, except to say that the power transition model is keeping the United States military in line through the Joint Japan Committee under the Status of Forces Agreement. I got through to Japan during three months in 2014 when I lived in Tokyo and worked together with a Japanese journalist, Izumi Takahashi. I've been keeping all the embassies in Tokyo updated on the global currency reset, along with the New York missions and Washington embassies. With the news about the global debt facility hitting the mainstream media in Greece, news of the global currency reset is going to reach many more people. Now that we're on the subject of Greece, let me just show you a piece of the conversation that we are now having about Greece. I also mention Greece on pages 17 through 20 of the teleprompter, which I'm going to be uploading later tonight on YouTube. If you think we'll update you on Greece today on DCTV, you're right. Yes. We're having a conversation. Who is we? It's the Coalition for the Rule of Law, who
whose existence was predicted by the power transition model that we're referring to here. This coalition is stronger than the banking cartel. I'm allowed to speak for this coalition, provided that I don't get out ahead of the coalition. We know that I've gotten out ahead of the coalition if a majority vote from the members of the World Bank and IMF go on record in writing that I've gotten out ahead. I speak for the United States during this interregnum when there is no legitimate government of the United States because the Constitution of 1789 is not in force and effect. One other point to make about my speaking for the Coalition for the Rule of Law, the banking cartel is trying to interrupt this conversation. A Twitter account named Global Currency Reset Now is making blasphemous statements in my social media. I just put a stop to this attack. And let me read you some of these statements. Who stops wars to the ends of the earth, breaks the bow, splinters the spear, and burns the shields with fire? Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations, exalted on the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. And this was in a Twitter account. And I replied to Marco Rubio, who made that statement. God and the rest is, sorry, that's not me. That was somebody else who said that. Um, it was the global currency reset. God and the rest is a lie, and we will not allow this to continue. And global currency reset tweeted this. This tweet of yours has nothing to do with me. I said that to global currency reset. I just said that I'm not talking uh, as if I'm God. I know perfectly well that I'm not God, and I never said that. But this uh, fellow Marco Rubio and Global Currency Reset were trying to uh, make it seem that that was what I was saying. And what I said to Marco Rubio, you left out all humanity in the Global Currency Reset. Why did you do that? Obviously, he was trying to um, make me look bad. There's always a risk that newbies get played by the network of global corporate control identified by the Tali Glotfelder and Battiston of ETH Zurich. I've been speaking for the U.S. monetary gold reserves during this interregnum that the U.S. Constitution of 1789 is suspended by the U.S. Congress under a state of emergency. As agreed by the Board of Governors of the World Bank and IMF, that administer the global debt facility under paragraph six of the bilateral Minesfield Breakthrough Successor Agreement. One more thing to say is that I have no intention of using the global currency reset as a vetting agency to anoint groups to pursue their own agendas. My only agenda is to work on whistleblower protections and replace the network of global corporate controls paper currencies with national currencies, first paper, then gold, and make sure that people understand their responsibility to work in their villages and towns on local currencies and get funding going from the global debt facility for the cleanup of Fukushima. That should keep me busy. And this is from Oli, who had sent me a question. Uh, Hi, Karen. Just a thought to share. If you're not doing it already, it occurred to me it might be good to periodically rerun your power transition model with updated stakeholder attributes in order to make adjustments when developing events, when they, uh, developing events change from the original predictions. More importantly, I think it would be vital to incorporate into the model, possibly as additional stakeholders, the ever-growing UN-led covert global depopulation program started in 1945. Kevin Galilei's recent book, Depop Secrets, is a compilation of his recent articles and letters, with many references to primary documents that together completely expose the topic. 
I believe that this is, in fact, the fundamental driver, still a largely unacknowledged one behind all major issues in global finance and geopolitics today. I worry that your model is not likely to be accurate without taking this into account. The two stakeholders at the polar opposites may be, for example, the Vatican at the hub of the covert depopulation program versus Orthodox Christianity, primarily in Russia, addressing the issues of concern openly and upholding the rule of law. Well, I told Oli that he didn't have a clue about how the, um, the power transition model works. It doesn't work that way. And then I tweeted that um, Churchill, Hitler, Mao Zedong, and Stalin were all agents of the banking cartel. And I also asked a question and made some observations. Oh, this, is, this was a comment in YouTube. I made uh, some observations, but no one replied. I know that I will be called a sock puppet or a troll, neither of which I am. We're told that Trump is not the legitimate president. However, he controls the military, all of our weapons of mass destruction, including nuclear. I believe the Pentagon and its very top generals are the ones that call the shots, and Trump has no choice but to do what they tell him to do. From my vantage point, I see that we are on the very edge of a nuclear war with North Korea, China, and Russia. Israel is making for war with Iran, Lebanon, and Syria. Israel will be assisted by Saudi Arabia, Turkey, some of the other Arab states, and of course the USA, England, France, Australia, etc. How are we winning? And I said to CRM, you've forgotten that the military reads my social media. You're ignoring the power transition model which is 90 to 95 percent accurate. Trump knows that his power base is falling away like sand trickling through an hourglass. Everything the banking cartel tries backfires because they are in reality bankrupt liars and time is not on their side. Is the United States minus the Fed a reality? Don't the people reading this count for anything in your view of things? And then I made another comment, which YouTube dropped. That comment, I said that Japan and Germany will not let the Federal Reserve note crash, resulting in a unilateral surrender. This prediction comes from the accurate power transition model. I was looking to see what YouTube wants me to concentrate on for my upcoming broadcast. This is it. Thanks, YouTube. And you can see in the videos from uh, Yasek Kugler and Mark Abdullahian that this model is developed at the National War College, and it predicts how coalitions will form using game theory and opinions from experts about the positions of stakeholders. Stakeholders are groups that influence a problem. It's 90 to 95 percent accurate. I'm also giving you links to the talks by Kugler and Abdullahian, uh, who developed this model for Ronald Tamman. And Ronald Tamman was the chair of the Department of National Strategy and professor of national strategy at the National War College at the time. Since we're talking about progress, let's talk about broken links. The banking cartel frequently breaks the links to documents that I post in my social media. And then I let people know what the banking cartel was trying to censor. We keep score how many times these links have to be restored. And we also rub it in that we're strong enough to overcome this censorship at will. As I tweeted and then retweeted, one, we're managing to get through. Two, attempted threats are not credible. Three, Stay tuned. And then on the 27th of February, I wrote, or I tweeted in my social media, we have, have weathered a pretty hefty transition. You can see from the tweets at the end that I've been confronting the banking cartel and the black nobility at its core 
on our behalf. We're preparing to take down the banking cartel. And then I repeated those three points. The inevitable interference is only serving to confirm the existence of the banking cartel as we reveal, and there's heightened interest in, the information that the banking cartel attempts to censor. The banking cartel's attempted threats are not credible. As an immediate case in point, the attacks on my heart aren't intimidating me. They're only giving me a chance to demonstrate one of my functions as the canary in the coal mine. And I posted another segment, um, I'm going to be posting that tonight, in the DCTV series. And you should just stay tuned. Stay tuned as we continue to let people know about the corruption. And we're scrolling through the uh, stationary letterhead. And then on the 2nd of March, I sent uh, something to a man named Roland Lessard. Um, the email that you received is a scam. As you see, I'm using a pseudonym to keep your name secret. Well, actually, not in the teleprompter, sorry. Um, the correspondence um, was about um, CMKX. A shareholder wrote to me, and I, um, I, didn't, uh, I didn't want to give his identity, but I just did. And that's because the CMKX shareholder lawsuit, that's a CIA scam. It's trying to plunge the world into World War III, and we're not going there. The courts are corrupt, and a trial is irrelevant because judges are mere employees in the pay of the network of global corporate control. The CMKX lawsuit was just an attempt of the CIA to steal the world's assets in the global debt facility. The courts have nothing to say about the assets in the global debt facility because the courts have no jurisdiction over those assets. The CIA tried bribing me with shares in the CMKX Diamonds lawsuit so that I would allow the CIA to steal the assets in the global debt facility. Instead, I simply exposed the CIA and its corruption. There will be no recovery in the CMKX lawsuit. The court has no jurisdiction over the assets in the global debt facility. The assets in the global debt facility are being minted to go into the currency of the nations. The corruption in the world's money is exposed and the banking cartel is being wound down in the global debt facility as it is insolvent. Already, a critical mass recognizes this truth. We're on a Nantucket sleigh ride as more and more people realize the difference between reality and the banking cartel's lies. And then there was an email from Robert. Hello, recently I received an email out of the blue stating that CMKX is still alive. I own 15 million shares. I hold the certificate, so does my father and a few friends of mine. I'd like to know if there's still a chance to recuperate something out of this scandal and where could I get more information concerning the ongoing of the trial in progress. Well, my answer is that, no, you're not getting any money. And the bribe, <laughs> it didn't work, did it? No, it didn't work. And then um, I sent another uh, tweet on the 14th of, um, you want to scroll, Alia, keep going. Yeah, thank you. The battle with the bloodline families and the banking cartel over reality and the world's wealth is joined. This was probably what inspired the Marines to attack the CIA on the 18th of November. At the end of the tweet, I showed a screenshot of the banking cartel's argument that they can simply rescind the terms of the bilateral minefield breakthrough successor agreement, which governs the world's wealth and the global debt facility. The banking cartel has no authority or power in this matter. I nullified their attempt 
to steal the world's wealth from the world's people, yet again. I've been doing this consistently now for the past several years. I'll show you that this is reality and the truth in this tweet. I speak for the United States and the other countries on the Board of Governors of the World Bank and IMF, and for the beneficiaries of the Global Debt Facility. It'll be very tedious for me to have to rehash all of the public record about the corruption in the world's money now. I've put some links to relevant documents at the end. Suffice it to say that the world's people are in charge of the cleanup and this will take place on a decentralized basis, fixing things retroactively as the decentralization takes hold. After 50 years have passed, under the statute of limitations, there can be no proof that anyone except the global debt facility, which is a trust for the benefit of all of humanity, and its name is TVM LSM 666, this is the trust that has title to the world's wealth. The banking cartel and the bloodline families attempted to dominate us under a secret military rule. They failed because we caught them at it and exposed what they tried, and nobody came to their defense, not even them. Now, I, as overseer mandate trustee of the Global Debt Facility and as acting general counsel of the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development and in my individual capacity have bankrupted the acting commanding general, District of Columbia, Army National Guard, Brigadier General William I. Walker, and the acting adjutant general, District of Columbia Air National Guard, Brigadier General George M. Daniel. This is after I've bankrupted so many other agents of the banking cartel who attempted to withhold the U.S. monetary gold reserves and other wealth from the United States people and the rest of the world's assets in the global debt facility from the world's other peoples. In these capacities, I'm also instructing the United Nations peacekeeping troops to leave U.S. soil. And then on the 6th of June, I'm sorry, are we, are we going to the end? Do you want me to do the closing? Well, it, I can't read because it's scrolling too quickly. What, what's happening? <laughs> do you want me to speak extemporaneously? Maybe I better do that. Okay, well, we're in an, an ongoing dialogue, people. Um, all right. You want me to speak extemporaneously? All right. Well, we've been, um, we've been getting through. That's very clear. And one of the other things that I want to talk about is my health, because I was attacked. You know, I, uh, out of the clear blue sky, I had to go see a cardiologist because of um, arrhythmia in me. Um, but I'm doing fine. I'm, I'm on drugs. And um, no, they can't, they, they can't do me in. I'm here. And as long as I'm here, I intend to continue exposing the corruption in the banking cartel. You want me to do the closing now? Okay. Um, the United States military is with us, our gold, and the United States Constitution of 1789. We, humanity, are in charge of the world's wealth and not the insolvent, that means bankrupt, banking cartel. I'm here to work together with everyone, using the world's wealth to clean up our money.